Hi everyone, it's Dana Walton, and today I'm going to share with you how I take a self-portrait. First, I'm going to cover the technical side with camera settings and focal points, and then I'm going to share some little tips that work for me that help me relax and become more comfortable in front of the camera. Because let's face it, it does feel kind of awkward when taking your own photo, so let's look at ways that we can help ourselves relax so we can have a more natural outcome. So I'm going to start with showing you how basic my setup is. First I have my camera, Nikon D750, and right now I have a 35mm on. Normally for a portrait I would use an 85, but sometimes space limitations will not allow the 85 to get everything into the frame. So I'm going to use the 35 for today. A couple of really important factors when taking a self-portrait is to make sure that you are not in automatic focus and that you bring it over to manual. The reason being is when you have it in manual, you will set your focus point. When you leave it in automatic, your camera will guess that focus point and that is why people often miss their focus. Oh, also, this here is a remote shutter release. You can use your timer. I find that I'm really clumsy, so to rush back after the 10 second window, I'm not likely going to make it there in perfect form. So I like to use a cable release. It's cordless and it gives me way more control. Another thing you should know is when you're setting your um, aperture, make sure you give yourself enough space. You need, I would do at least 5.6. I know sometimes we get really excited about, you know, 1.4, 1.8, 2.8. It does help let in more light, but your trade-off is that you're likely going to miss your focus because there's not enough depth of field to be able to capture you entirely sharp. You are doing some guesswork about where you're going to be. So when you're setting your focal point, this gives you a little more grace. Next, you're going to want to look at your light source. So I'm using flat light and this area is being illuminated by this large window here. So I have a lot of natural light coming in to give me even light. Lastly, going back to the focal point, I'm going to just back my camera up here. You're going to want to place an object on the same plane where you are going to be seated or standing. I prefer seated and I'll explain why later. And then you're going to manually focus onto that particular object. Now, hang on, I think we got it right there. Perfect. So now I know to go sit where that coffee mug is because I know that is the plane where the focus is, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna have a seat where my coffee mug is. I'm gonna be right in line with this because this is what I focused on, so I wanna make sure I fall into the correct focal plane. And now we're gonna talk about how to look less awkward in your self-portraits. So first things first, I prefer to be seated when I'm taking mine, whether I'm sitting on a chair or sitting on the floor. Being seated already increases the comfort factor for me. I'm not worried about standing or how stiff or weird I feel. Should I lean? Should I stand straight? It's off the table. So seated for me is comfortable. When you're seated, also make sure you're using good posture. Don't be slouching over, you know, looking like sit up nice and tall. It really will make a more flattering photo. Next, I like to use a prop, something as simple as my cup of coffee. And the reason I like this is because it's comfortable for me. 
I always have a cup of coffee on the go, so it's just a natural fit in my hand and it feels comforting. I love it. There's so many little things you can do with it. You know, you can have it right here and just, you know, tweak your shoulders. Take a couple photos if you can. If you're on a timer, you know you might have to run back and forth. Or in this situation, this is why I really do like the remote. It gives you some more flexibility. So you can take a few photos this way. You can, you know, bring it up over here. Look this way, look that way. You know, there's a lot of different little, little minor tweaks and adjustments you make with subtle movements. Try and capture those in between because you'll probably find one in there that you'll like and the rest you'll just scrub. Bring up your cup, you know, bring up your cup a little closer. Get, a, get in a nice close shot. Crop it in real tight if you can. You know, it might not be easy to do that now, but in post you can crop it in a little tighter. Also, grab a magazine. Grab a magazine. Sit back. Get comfortable. Why? Because you'll look comfortable. Bring your coffee or your tea. It may or may not be in the frame, depending on you know your your crop. And just start looking at your magazine and take photos. And smile or don't, you know. You play around with it, you decide on your expression. And every time you look at the back of your camera, think about little differences you might want to try next time. Because the important factor is to shoot a lot of photos. When you're taking a self-portrait, you're really shooting blind here. You cannot see what you look like from the back of your camera, which is where you're comfortable. So you're kind of going into this guessing what you're doing. Take lots and expect to have a ton, a ton, a ton of duds. I have so many, it's, it's disgusting. But what happens? They go right into the recycling bin and no one knows about it. I just keep shooting and I have fun and I lighten up. I don't take it too seriously because I know I'm just going to delete the ones I don't like. So you know, click, 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 I'm going to take some photos here, maybe I'll look over here, maybe I'll look right at the camera. It's all a matter of making those minor adjustments. You know, switch, switch up, you know, make a little difference with your hair. I know it seems kind of silly, but maybe my hair was obstructing some of my features and I didn't know because I can't see. So just be mindful of making those little adjustments. Now I'm going to double dip. I'm going to use both my props. This looks a little more comfortable and natural. It's not unlikely that I would be holding a cup of coffee and reading a magazine. So I think the reason a lot of people comment that my photos look natural is because I'm doing an activity that's pretty natural to who I am. It's a very authentic version of myself. And when you're doing uh, something that's a true likeness of yourself, you're more likely going to achieve a more natural result. Uh, other photos I've taken for self-portraits are maybe simply of me taking a photo of something else because that's also a very authentic version of who I am. I love to take photos. So find what you like to do and find a way to incorporate it in your image. And keep it simple. Don't, don't, don't strive for perfection. You will trip yourself up and you will fall flat. If you are trying too hard to be perfect at it, it's going to only raise your stress. So just really have fun, let it go, and think about how you would like to capture a portrait of yourself being who you are so your family can enjoy that photo of you. You're always the one behind the camera, so when you get in front of it, just think about how nice it would be to have a photo of you in a typical moment that your family will be able to treasure because it is an authentic version of yourself and have fun with it. If you want to be goofy and make faces and whatever it takes to loosen you up, then do it. Do whatever you need to to just get yourself comfortable because at the end of the day, the more comfortable you feel, the more natural looking your photo will, will reveal itself to be. It's all a matter of your state of mind as well as just getting comfortable. Sit in a way that makes you feel good. Use something that, that reminds you of, you know, a cozy cup of coffee that makes me feel great. So bottom line, as far as the technical side goes, let's recap quickly. 
Make sure that you are in manual focus. Manual, you control the focal point. Don't let automatic override where you should be focusing. Also, make sure your aperture is wide enough so you have enough space to fit into that focal plane. Nothing is more disappointing than getting everything just right to only find out that the camera had misfocused and you know focused on your foreground and you're blurred out in the background or vice versa. You focused in the back and not in the front. Lighting. Lighting is detrimental. Make sure you have good lighting. If you want to, you know, create a great look, lighting will be a key component to that. So make sure your lighting source is really good. From a comfort point of view, really, keep your hands occupied. When your hands are busy, you could be sitting at a table, head down, writing a note, looking up quick. But your hands are busy. So last touch on that, keep your hands busy and you will hugely eliminate the awkward factor. You're gonna get over the, you know, being uncertain of what to do with your hands. And one last quick tip, if you notice behind me, my background is very, very plain and simple. The reason I like it for myself is it's a reflection of my style. My style is very simple and my focus is usually right on the subject, so there's no, no clutter and no distractions. That's reflective of my style and that's what I like, that works for me. If you want to try something as simple as that too, how about her? Find a blank wall and then in post you can fill in the little gaps, maybe here if that's uh, not quite matching so you can get the right crop. I hope this information helps you and I know you're going to do just fine. Just be patient with yourself and have lots of fun because if not, it will feel awkward. So get over it and own it and throw a little bit of music on and enjoy being in front of the camera once in a while.